Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Sorry, it's been a little bit of time since I have been on here. Guys, I've been so sick. That plague that went around, I got it. I got the plague. Oh man, it was rough. It was rough. So I do apologize for my absence. I have just been really under the weather, but I am feeling a lot better now. And I am so excited for this video. This actually isn't even the video that I had planned on putting out today, but these just came. I need to try them right away. So we're gonna try them like right now so we can get this video up because Ah, I'm so excited. So what I have in front of me is from Artemis Paint Studio, who is a store on Etsy. And I saw their Instagram one night. I was just scrolling through Instagram and I saw their Instagram and it is gorgeous. Um, I will link it down below if you want to check out their Instagram. And they do handmade watercolor paints. So handmade she makes them and yeah so I, I am so excited and they look gorgeous they look so beautiful so I am gonna dive into this and then we can talk more about them so it came in this beautiful little gold package it says keep dry do not bend handle with care Artemis paint studio a little like sticker oh my god I've I just I've been so excited to open this you have no idea okay oh my god there's chocolate inside what the heck this is so pretty Holy cow. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna give them a 10 out of 10 on the packaging. As far as packaging rating goes, 10 out of 10. Oh my gosh, how cute is this? So I'm assuming these are the paints. Um, they're wrapped in this like beautiful gold glittery paper, which is not, it doesn't rub off. I'm not really getting any glitter on me. And there's a wax seal, like a gold wax seal around the, um, the string that's holding it together. There's a Ghirardelli Peppermint Bark, which I love. Um, and then over here, oh, cute. We love what we do and hope you do too. Please come back and leave a review. It's her business card. And then there are two color wheel, little like printouts on watercolor paper. I am actually beyond excited, you guys. This is like a Christmas present to myself. Okay, so we're zoomed in so we can see the beauty that is this packaging. And okay, I don't, oh my God, I don't wanna break it. Oh, I guess I probably could have done, yep, see, look, I didn't have to ruin it. Wow, I am not smart. So when I ordered this, I got to choose the, like, color of the box lid. Um, it, the colors were, options were purple and gray. How pretty is that? I wish I hadn't ripped the string through it like an idiot. And I chose purple, obviously. I'm so excited. <laughs> so it comes in this beautiful little, like, golden box, tin box. It's their label. It says Artemis Paint Studio, Artist Quality What? Artist quality watercolor paints, richly pigmented mineral paints for the everyday artist. And the cover, like the sticker is like embossed or not embossed, but it's gold. It's got gold on it. So it's really pretty. This is a beautiful, beautiful set. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Oh, it's so cute. Everything is so celestial. Okay, so inside there is a place to put your swatches. Um, and it says, turn your effort into gold. Okay. And then there's little like paper, keep everything protected. And then here are the paints themselves in here. This set also came with a little small pencil, which is super cute. And it came with a little baby pipette, pipette. Okay, so let me address something right now. I had some people tell me that they pronounce it pipette. That is American. I asked my mom who used to work in a laboratory in England and she said that they pronounce it pipette. So that's why I pronounce it pipette. So yeah, I'm gonna keep pronouncing it pipette, thanks. Um, these are the paints. They have a cute little like packaging. It says number 34, there's swatches on the top. So this is the Split Primary Watercolor Palette. Um, it has warm primaries and cool primaries. So it's gonna have a set of warm primaries and cool primaries, basically two yellows, a cool and a warm, two reds, a cool and a warm, and two blues, a cool and a warm, which is perfect. That's a really, really great way to give enough variation that you're gonna be able to make so many different colors without making them muddy. So I am gonna do a whole video on color theory where I talk about warm and cool versions of different colors because it's really important when you're mixing to know that kind of stuff. Um, but it is, I'm really glad that they did that. It was $52 for six paints. So six paints plus the tin plus the pencil and all of the other stuff. 
which is pretty comparable to uh, an artist quality paint, especially for something that is handmade. I felt like $52 for six was perfectly reasonable, so no complaints there. And they are loose in here in the little pans, so I'm going to open them up. And the pans, it looks like, are magnetic. Yeah. So once you take the pan out of the little wrapper, it sticks to the bottom of the tin. So we have cerulean. We have phthalo blue. Quinacridone red. Vermilion. Then we have Midas. This one's called Midas. That's cool. And cadmium lemon. So this is a great selection of colors. Um, it's pretty much what I would choose. So very excited to try these guys out. So like I said, this is by the Etsy store Artemis Paint Studio, and the, it is owned by Emily Bujold. I am sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong. I Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. They've been on Etsy since 2019, so this is like their first year. They have 250 reviews. They have five stars, so I have high hopes for this. They have two pre-made palettes on their Etsy right now. They have this one that I got, the split primary, and then they also have a two-color perfect pair set, which is a perfect pair of romantic colors. So they have a couple little sets, and then you can also buy the paints individually. And then when I was looking through, they also have a Patreon. They have a Paint of the Month Club. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, it's included shipping and it's always a new color. So if I like these, maybe I will go join me a Paint of the Month Club because how fun is that? Um, also, these did ship the same day that I ordered them and they arrived, I believe, two days later with just the regular shipping. So shipping was super, super fast. So now let's see how these actually paint. So I just want to go over what it says on the Etsy page while I do kind of some of these swatches. So these are made from single pigments and it says they are rich paints that won't get muddy when they're mixed. It says that they are handmade and don't contain any fillers. So the paint is really bright and transparent for professional results. So the colors in here, as I mentioned, are vermilion, which is number 37, quinacridone red, number 34, Midas, number 39, cadmium yellow, number 35, cerulean, number 38, and phthalo blue, number 36. You can also buy all of those individually, so you can buy all of them individually if you need to replace any. As I said, she has a paint of the month club. These are all half pans with magnetic stickers on the bottom. And she does mention during the Etsy, uh, in the Etsy description that some watercolors may display cracks, shrinking, or bubbles during the shrink during the drying process. Totally normal. Um, she also says that she does her best to mitigate those issues. And she also mentions that some paints might be soft to the touch and stick to the wrapper, which did happen on one paint, but seriously, not even remotely a problem. It's like a tiny, tiny amount of paper. And as she says, none of those characteristics take away from the intensity of the pigment, which is very, very true. Okay, so right off the bat, we are already off to a really, really strong start. Just looking at these swatches, they're gorgeous. Uh, the colors are very, very pigmented, super, super translucent. Um, the yellow is super translucent. I, it, like, it's not chalky at all. The red, the blue, they're beautiful. I can see that I'm getting some really nice granulation starting to happen already over here in the blue, the cerulean. I'm already really excited. I already think I want to order more. Um, I'm not kidding. So let's play around with this color wheel, see what we can make with the color wheel. And then I am going to sketch something up and we're going to try these in an actual piece and see how they work to create something on the materials that I'm normally used to working with, my normal watercolor paper and all of that. So while I'm working on these color wheels, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to the sponsor of this video. Sponsorships are what allow me to be able to purchase supplies to review for this channel, so they are so helpful for my channel, so I am always so thankful to my sponsors. So thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring me and for supporting my channel. It is so, so wonderful. You guys know that I have worked with Skillshare for quite some time now because I genuinely like their platform. They are an online learning platform with thousands of different classes on a bunch of stuff. I've used them before they sponsored me. I used them before I was a YouTuber. I taught myself motion graphics with Skillshare. I've improved my brush lettering with Skillshare. I am a huge, huge fan of that platform and I cannot recommend it enough. One class that I want to highlight this time around is actually by Victo Nye, who is an illustrator and she has a class called Color Masterclass 
simple steps to create vivid art. And I think that color is so important. We're talking a lot about color theory in this video today. So if you want to learn more about color theory and how color can make your art better, I definitely recommend checking out this class. Skillshare is less than $10 a month if you do the like yearly subscription, but they do have a free two month trial for you guys. So click the link down in the description box below. You can get your free two month trial and you can go take that color theory class and hopefully learn some more about colors. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. It really does help me out so much and allow me to purchase things like this from a small business and support them as well. So back to the video. Okay, so here we have the two color wheels that I created. This is going to be the warm colors. These are the cool colors. Obviously, obviously you can intermix these. Like for example, if I mix this lemon yellow with this vermilion, I would get a really bright saturated orange versus some of the more neutral ones that I have here. But this is more useful for me because I can see how, what, basically what the color range of cool and warm colors that I can create is. And it kind of gives me a little bit more of an example of colors that I'm going to more realistically use, um, like these beautiful muted purples down here that are created when mixing the warm red and the warm blue. So this is what everything looks like right now. I am thoroughly loving these. They are very textured. They granulate like no one's business. I can tell there's a really high pigment count in them. I love that. I love textured watercolor. That's probably my biggest reason for loving watercolor. So I can't wait to get these onto some other paper and see how they work on that. Um, the texture that I'm getting here, especially in the purples and these like blues and greens over here are, it's just gorgeous. It's making me so happy and I cannot wait to work with these. I think that she has done an amazing job in picking out the specific colors. I think these colors all work amazingly well together. You can create a really great range of like earth tones and skin tones, especially with the peaches over here and with the brighter colors that she's included as well. I'm also going to be able to create some really bright, vibrant colors as well if I want to. These are a little bit more muted, but mixing this and this will create a really nice bright lime green. Mixing these two is going to create a bright orange and I'm loving these purple and teal colors I'm able to get as well. So very, very impressed with the color selection. It was clearly well thought out. Color selection for me is important. If I'm paying for paints, I really don't want a paint color in there that's not useful for me. Um, that's why I have an issue with white in watercolor paints because uh, if you want to use white, that's fine, but it is not a necessary color to include in a palette. It you can create every watercolor you ever need without using white paint, period. So um, including in a watercolor palette to me is a waste of space. So I think she's done an amazing, amazing job with the color selection just to begin with. So I honestly, at this point, I'm already at the point where I would want to recommend these to you, but I want to see how they work in a painting and I want to see how they lift and how they layer because that's really going to affect how well I can use them is their lifting and their layering properties. But in terms of initial first impressions, I am beyond impressed, beyond impressed. So I'm going to go get some sketches done and then let's jump into making some art with these. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do on this sketch is I'm gonna go in with this Peebo masking fluid marker, and I'm gonna use that to mask out some areas that I want to stay nice and white, at least for the time being in the line art. I am gonna be working on a commission today. This commission is for my friend Vicky, and she gave me total creative freedom, so I drew up this little fairy. I was really inspired by all of these colors that I mixed up in the color wheel. I really wanted to do fun things with colors. So for the liner, I'm using this Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India ink in the color magenta. This is a waterproof India ink, but it is colored. So I was like, heck yes, let's do some colored line art and we can really see how translucent these paints are because we'll get to see how they play with bright pink line art. So, you know, we're going for it. Like I said, I was really inspired by all of the colors I was able to create after doing the color charts. So I think that I'm actually gonna make sure to start mixing some color charts right at the beginning when I get my paints in the future because it really allows me to see what different colors I can create and I drew a lot of inspiration from that. I was really digging the kind of blue greens and the purples and the pink, so that's what I went with. I drew this little fairy, gave her some fun butterfly wings and wanted to have all of these flowers kind of surrounding her all over her clothes. She's holding them in her hands, they're in her hair. So we're going real 
flower fairy princess today and we're gonna add some glitter towards the end I'm excited it's gonna be fun I really like how this turned out so I hope that you guys like it as well it's kind of the concept behind this um, if you guys haven't used this ink before, it did hold up pretty well. It did smudge a little bit. Like it says that it's like India ink and it's fully waterproof, but I did think there was a little bit where I noticed some of the pink kind of felt like it rubbed off into the other colors, but I don't know. It still worked great and it wasn't like the actual line smeared or anything like that. So I think, I think I would recommend it. I would recommend it. I liked the ink. It was fun. I enjoyed using it. I'll use it again. Um, and I am doing the liner with a Transon brush. This is my favorite brush for doing lines. I will have all of the supplies listed down in the description box below if you guys are interested in what I'm working with. So once all my lines are done and erased, I added in a little bit of a contrasting black line just kind of floating above this like leafy kind of petal skirt in just some like a black fine liner. I got this black fine liner from my testing Amazon sponsored art supplies video, which I will link down below if you're interested. And once all of the setup was done, we got to add in some color. You guys, these paints are so good. Spoiler alert. It's not really a spoiler. We're 16 minutes into the video, uh, but these paints are freaking great. I loved them. I loved them from the moment I first started doing the swatches and painting with them. Oh, I, these, mm, yes, I love them. So starting with the background, working with more of a blue green kind of color. So I'm mixing the cerulean, the phthalo and a couple of the yellows together. I don't want it to be, I want it to be more cool, have that kind of like minty sagey color, but I don't want it to be super bright. So that enables me to kind of dull that color down and keep it this cool kind of soft, minty kind of sage I guess and I thought that looked so pretty with the pink the thing that I loved about this the thing that I love about these paints the most and I mentioned this at the beginning is they are so beautiful for texture so if you like a, any kind of texture in your paint you're really gonna love these especially for mixing those like greens when I'm looking at the picture I can see the pigments kind of like settled in and Oh, oh, it's so pretty. There's all of these beautiful like granulated patches where you can see kind of a little bit more blue or a little bit more yellow and it's so pretty. It makes me so happy. But you can also get a really nice smooth wash. As you could see here when I was creating the skin tone, looking at the skin, it's just as smooth of a wash as any wash I've gotten from any other paint that I've ever had, any mass produced paint, any commercially produced paint, the wash is beautiful and smooth. I was able to get smooth washes both in the skin, in the lavender for the hair, in the uh, wings. I did some wet on wet, but I was also able to get, like I said, that really beautiful granulation in a lot of the colors, especially the blue. The blue really does granulate well. And if you're sitting here wondering what the heck I'm talking about and what granulation is, granulation is akin to what you saw earlier you would have seen it in the color wheel it's where that pigment settles down into the grooves of the paper and you have kind of it's like a darker area and it's a really beautiful modeled texture that is so unique to watercolor that I absolutely adore as far as painting with these goes they are really really easy to paint I didn't really have any issues blending sometimes they were almost quote like too pigmented if that makes sense like I could get a really high pigment count very very easily with the water so I had to make sure that I was di like literally had to make sure I was diluting it enough because otherwise it would be like so pigment pig so pigmented wow talking is hard that it would almost granulate too much in a couple places when I was getting into the really dark colors like here but I just had to make sure that I was like diluting it enough, if that makes sense. Like I'm, I'm almost like not used to working with paints that have such a high pigment content in them. Um, it was very impressive. And I, I really, I just loved how these performed, you guys. Translucency, so translucent. I painted this whole thing. Like I said, I used the pink ink to kind of see a little bit about how the translucency would work. Obviously you're going to layer color on top of pink and you know, the color of the pink is going to change, but it actually worked so well with this pink ink. It remained decently translucent for most of it. I did go through at the end and touch up with the pink ink over the top in a couple areas, but it really didn't make the lines like chalky. I didn't feel like I needed to go over a lot of the lines towards the end. The only times were to really boost the, the color of the pink because it had changed color, but not because I felt like it was obscured by the paint, if that makes any sense. 
So if you have these paints and you're painting over black, you're not really gonna have too many issues with it covering the black lines and fading the black lines. Obviously, the more pigment that you put on top of black lines, the more that it's gonna cover it, but these are definitely as translucent as any other professional watercolor that I have ever used. Um, I would not call them chalky at all. Uh, as far as let's talk about lifting and layering because that to me is really where watercolor paint can make or break itself. I mean, this paint can be beautiful when you layer down, but if you can't, you know, paint with it, if you can't build it multiple layers, if it lifts too easily, I mean, that's not, at least for me, for my technique wouldn't work. So that was something that was really important to, to see was how well was this going to layer? If you like to layer, you're gonna like these paints. They layered so nicely. I didn't really have any issues with them disturbing the layer of paint below. I was able to layer time and time again, over and over and over again. Like I said, they're really translucent because they're highly pigment based. So you're layering the pigment on top of the pigment. So it's not getting as muddy. There's not all of these fillers that are getting in the way and adding chalkiness to it. So you can layer a lot more than you maybe normally would be able to. You can build up lots of thin layers, which is just beautiful. And the, the biggest thing to me was it really doesn't disturb the paint underneath. I would say that if you like to lift, you may not like these paints as much. They don't lift as well as other paints. For me, that is a huge advantage advantage. Um, a lot of people do like the watercolor. You can lift off a lot more. And these paints, I would say, are probably some of the more staining paints I've ever used. I will have to do like some actual tests where I, you know, see how much I can lift. But just from using them in a regular piece, I didn't need, I didn't need to lift too much in this piece, but they, they did not lift accidentally. I had no issues when building up darker colors with it lifting the lighter, the color underneath, which is something that is very frustrating for me when I'm trying to build up a dark, rich color in watercolor and then you add on another layer and it just lifts the paint up underneath and all of a sudden you've got a lot of dark at the edges and the center is very, very light. That does not happen with these, which thank goodness, because that is so annoying. So as somebody who likes to work in lots and lots of layers, these paints are absolutely perfect for me. I mean, beyond perfect. They, they tick off all of the boxes that are very high for me, such as, you know, layering well, layering with no problem. Uh, they're single pigment. They granulate beautifully. They're transparent. And honestly, it's a independent owner and a small business. And that to me is so cool. I am a huge proponent of supporting small businesses when you can. And these paints are on par, if not higher quality than any professional paint I've ever used. And I'm including Schmincke in that. I am including Dan Smith in that. They're great. They are great. They are great paints. Absolutely on par with any professional quality that I have ever used, at least in my first impression and basing them off of what I just used them for this piece. I love them. I personally am 100% going to be purchasing more of them. These are not their metallic paints. The metallic paints that I'm using right now, I tested in another video and I wanted to add glitter to this because she a fairy, you know, um, but they do sell metallic paints and I cannot wait to try those out. I honestly think I might go join the paint of the month club, if not right now, very shortly. So 10 out of 10, I, I cannot recommend them enough. They're beautiful. $52 and this set, you can really create it's a perfect starter set if you want some paints that are a little bit more professional, a little bit nicer quality. You want to be able to create a bunch of different colors with them. You really want an all rounder. I think this could be a really, really good option. Um, I personally give it the Alice stamp of approval. Love them. Can't wait to try more paints from both her company. And also I did notice there are a couple other Etsy sellers out there that do homemade watercolors. So if you found this review helpful, let me know. Let me know if you'd like me to review any more homemade paints in the future. Let me know if there's any specific that you want me to review. Have you tried Artemis Paint Studios paints and do you love them as much as I do? Uh, so yeah, I hope that you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment down below and go show Artemis Paints some love because the paints are gorgeous. If you can't buy any, follow them on Instagram. Give their shop a favorite. Let's show some support for small businesses. So thanks so much for watching. I love you guys and have a great rest of your day. Bye guys. Bye.